The normal body has two kidneys, in the middle of the back, under the lowest ribs. Kidneys filter and clean blood to make urine. Ureters drain urine from the kidneys to the bladder. The bladder empties urine from the body through another tube called the urethra. The urinary tract includes all of these structures, the kidneys, ureters, bladder, and urethra. Kidney stones start as tiny crystals of minerals that stick together when urine is concentrated. This happens with dehydration. Crystals build into stones as more minerals deposit, similar to how a pearl builds in an oyster. Most small stones pass out of the body carried by urine. Larger stones tend to remain in the kidney or become stuck as they move down the ureter. About 1 in 10 people are affected by kidney stones in their lifetime. Dehydration, family history, and some medical conditions increase the risk of stone formation. Symptoms and problems often begin when urine flow is blocked by a stone. This can lead to severe pain, complicated infection, and blood in the urine. These problem stones are a risk for kidney damage. Many of these stones eventually pass without surgery. This is called expectant management. Medications may be prescribed for pain, infection, and to help the stone pass. Rest, heat, and ice may also be recommended. It can take days to weeks for some small stones to pass on their own. Surgical treatment can be necessary when a small stone doesn't pass with expectant management. For stones too large to pass on their own, any stone causing infection with fever and for uncontrolled pain, especially with nausea and vomiting. Stones larger than half a centimeter are more likely to need intervention. Some stones need more than one surgery, especially stones larger than two centimeters. Procedures for managing kidney stones that may be considered include cystoscopy, ureteroscopy, stent placement, PCNL, ESWL. We will discuss each of these in more detail to gain a better understanding of how, when, and why they may be used. Most of these procedures are performed using scopes, long instruments with a light and a camera. The surgeon uses different scopes for different functions to see and operate on places inside the urinary tract. Cystoscopy is the most basic procedure on the list. The surgeon uses a scope to look inside the urethra and bladder for stones and other problems. When needed, guide wires and dilators are passed through the cystoscope into the ureter. During a ureteroscopy, a thinner scope is used. This is guided further through the bladder into the ureter and sometimes up to the kidney. Once kidney stones are reached, other tools are used to break the stones apart and pull the pieces out. Large stones in the kidney and high in the ureter can require a more invasive approach. A PCNL procedure is done using a scope guided through a tube in the back directly into the kidney. A guide wire is inserted before surgery using X-ray guidance to map where the tube should be placed during surgery. This may be done in a separate radiology suite or in the operating room just before surgery. In the operating room, dilators are placed over the guide wire to create a passage to the kidney. A tube is placed to hold this open. The surgeon guides a scope through the tube to see the stone. Other tools are used to break the stone apart and remove the pieces. ESWL is known as lithotripsy. This non-invasive procedure is often useful for stones in the kidney. An X-ray device is used to pinpoint the kidney stone location, and a water-filled lithotripsy device is positioned against the skin over the kidney and aimed at the stone. Pulses of shock waves are directed at stones to break them into tiny pieces so they can pass out of the body. These pulses create a tapping noise and sensation on your back as hundreds of bursts are used at a time. Patients can have bruising and soreness in their back from the shock waves. 
Placement of a temporary stent is often a necessary step before, during, or after the procedures we have discussed so far. This thin, straw-like tube is passed through a cystoscope into the ureter, then guided up to the kidney. The curl at each end holds the stent in place. Stents keep the kidney draining. They are temporary, but may be needed for days or weeks. Stents can relieve stone pain and dilate the ureter to help a stone pass. Stents are placed while an infection is being treated before a stone can be removed. Stents are also needed while the ureter heals after some procedures. The most appropriate procedures for you depend on the size and location of the stone or stones, the severity of the blockage, and your other medical conditions. Before your surgery, understand which procedures are planned or may become necessary to treat your kidney stone.